Hi, and welcome to another podcast episode of the Christian Minute Podcast. My name is Anne Murphy, and I'm the host of this show. And I just want to start by thanking you for joining me today. In today's episode, I'm going to cover why it's important to pray together as a family. I'm going to give you a few reasons. I'm also going to share with you an example of all the things that I'm talking about from our own personal lives. And I'm going to end with just two quick tips to help you get started to pray as a family. So if you're ready, I'd like to jump right in. Let's go. As a parent, the number one thing that I want is for each and every single one of my kids to have a personal relationship with the Lord. And as we know, most things start at home, and that includes our children's relationship with Christ. And so one of the things that we can do to help them in their relationship with Jesus is to pray together as a family, because prayer is the number one way we communicate to God. God communicates to us in a few different ways, but there's only really one way to communicate with God, and that's through worship. And part of worship is prayer. And so when we're talking about praying together as a family, it's important because there are just so many benefits from doing this, and that's what I'm going to cover today. One of the things that happens when we pray together as a family is it teaches our children about prayer. So I know growing up in a Christian household, sometimes I would see people pray and I would think they'd be using all these fancy words and they had all this knowledge about Christianity and I didn't. And sometimes we see that in other Christians and becomes a hindrance. And so I really enjoy it when I hear other people pray and it's simple, it's practical, it's personal. And so when I listen to other people pray and I hear how other people relate to God, it teaches me how I can relate to God. Because in scripture, God calls himself father. He calls us to come to him as his children. So I imagine my relationship with my dad. And if I was always formal with him, it would be a very face value relationship. There wouldn't be a lot of depth there. But we want more than that face value relationship. We want to go deep with God. We want to build that really strong, deep relationship with him. And so it only makes sense that we become a little bit less formal, that we share the struggles with him, that we pray for really practical things. But the thing is, our kids may not know that they can approach God in that way unless they actually hear us do that. And so when we pray together as a family, it models for our children what prayer could look like. Because I like learning by observing and by hearing, and I know a lot of kids are the same way. So when you come together as a family and you pray, you're teaching them how to do it. The second thing that praying as a family does is it bonds you together and it brings you some unity. I'm not sure who said this, but it for sure wasn't me, but it's the idea of you can't pray for someone and hate them. See, you might not like somebody, but then when you start praying with them and you start praying for them, then you're going to create a bond. You're going to start actually loving them because you're investing that time in praying for them. And so that happens when you're praying together as a family because it's a shared experience and you're sometimes praying for your children or you're praying for other people that you know. And so you're bringing all those things in to create that bond. Now, the third thing that happens when you pray together as a family is it gives your kids a really strong foundation and a good starting off point. Because we know that as adults, starting new habits is extremely hard. So if your children build a habit of prayer when they're young, then it's more likely that they can then continue when they're adults. Now, if you're sitting there and you have older kids and you feel like maybe you're a little bit late to the table, this is not supposed to be a guilt trip. 
you can start this at any time. And if you're starting this when your kids are older, that's totally okay. Just last weekend, I went to my grandmother's celebration of life and she was a prayer warrior. And I knew that she prayed for me every single day. So we didn't necessarily always pray together because they live in Chicago and we live far away from them. And so we didn't see them often, but regardless of where I was, I knew she was praying for me. So if you have older kids, there is still power in the prayer that you do with them and for them. So please don't feel like you've missed the boat. There is always time to start and there's always so much power to it. And the joy that I have knowing that she prayed for me every day is so completely profound. And so I encourage you that regardless where you are or where your kids are, regardless of what age they are, you can start praying for them and with them and it'll be very impactful regardless of when you start this. But if you do have young kids, then this is a perfect time to start. And don't forget, at the end of this episode, I'm going to share with you a few, just a few tips for you to make this really, really easy and practical for you because having three kids myself, I know that I trying to add more things to the things that we do sometimes feels overwhelming and that's not my goal. So just know that it is impactful and it really does build that strong foundation so that when they do leave or wherever you are and they continue to go, it's such a firm foundation for them, for the for your kids to base their prayer life on afterwards, or even just knowing that somebody is praying for them. It's such a powerful thing. But even though all these things that I've just talked about are really important, the most important thing that praying does for your children is that it teaches them about God. So I've already talked about how it teaches them how to talk to God, because that's prayer, right? Just when we're talking, to God, but it also teaches them so much more because it teaches them to trust in him, right? When I think of prayer, most of us probably ask God for things more than we thank him for things. And so when I see that, I have this image of a child coming up to you with a gift and giving it to you. Now imagine if a child did that to you and you just threw it away or you ignored it, or you said something bad about it, that would have a profound impact on that child. You would learn something about that person that you don't want to go back to that same person with another gift. Now let's compare that to how we approach God. Maybe you approach God together in prayer and you see that you can ask him for anything I know that with my kids, whenever they're afraid, I calm their fears by praying with them, praying that they would feel God's presence with them. And so they have that experience of when they are afraid, they should turn to God. And then they can feel his peace with with them so that next time, my hope is that when they're older, they have now all this experience of turning to God when they're afraid and that when they do that, they receive peace from him. And so they're learning that God receives their prayer requests. They're learning how God hears them and they're learning how he then answers them. And I know for myself that even though I don't always get a yes from God, I always get an answer. And time and time and time again, God continues to prove who he is through my prayer life. He has answered so many of my prayers and he has revealed himself to me in many of my prayer times that it just continues to build my faith. So every single time that you're encouraging your child to pray and you're having that experience, then gives them the confidence to do it again and then again. And it's kind of like building that strong foundation that I talked about. Turning to God 
in prayer shows our children that we can trust God, that he is somebody that we can trust with all of the things. Because I know that I try to bring my children to Christ when we're thankful, when we're sad, when we're feeling anxious, when we're happy, just to know that every single one of these emotions, we can trust that God can handle. And so those experiences then build that trust in him. So then later, it's even easier to continue to bring those things to God because you have all these positive experiences and you just want to continue to have those with him. The other thing that we learn about God through prayer is trusting in his wisdom and his timing and his purpose. This year, we knew a family that was tragically killed and it was really a hard time. And I couldn't tell my kids why. And it was hard to make sense of any of it. But instead of shying away from that and trying to like hide that struggle, I shared it in an age appropriate way with them. And I was just honest and said like, I, I don't know why this happened to them, you know? But during that time, we turn to God for his wisdom and his peace. And so I still don't have an answer to that, but it shows God that even in these like uncertain times or even in these really hard moments when we can't give a reason, that we can turn to somebody who does have the answer. And he might not tell us and we might never know, but again, it's that building relationship building trust, knowing that at least somebody knows, <laughs> and we know the guy who knows all the things. And so when we turn to God in those times, I really do believe that that's what we're teaching our children, is that we can trust in God, who he is, his timing, his reasons, um, because he knows so much more than I do. And I truly believe that, you know, his way is best and that we can trust that. The other thing we learn about God is his faithfulness. Because when we pray for something and he answers it, then we see that he gives us what we ask for or he answers our prayers in whatever way he decides to answer our prayers. And when we continue to see that over and over and over again, that pattern shows us God's faithfulness, that regardless of what's happening in our lives, regardless of how we approach him, really, that he's always going to be there. And that continued faithfulness just deepens our appreciation for him and helps our kids just understand more of who God is. And all of this, hopefully, brings a spirit of thankfulness and gratitude towards God and who he is and how he wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to talk to us. He wants us to talk to him. And by doing that with our kids, hopefully that's what they learn. I hope that you can see how praying with your kids is so much more than just teaching them how to pray, that there are real benefits to doing this together. And I want to share with you a story that happened to our family earlier this year. My oldest daughter is now in junior high and she's part of the church's youth group. And before COVID, they would go to Mexico on a youth missions trip every two years. And so this summer they're going to Mexico. And last summer, my daughter was convinced she was going. As soon as she heard about it, she came home. She's like, mom, I'm going to Mexico. And I just thought, Oh, really? Okay. And we were like, well, maybe. And we left the opportunity open. And as the year progressed, she just continued to be more and more confident that this was exactly what was going to happen, that she was going to go to Mexico and that nothing was going to stop her and she was going to be there. And so we heard that she wanted to go. And so we took all the appropriate steps, right? We went to the information meetings. We start to think about financing. We got her passport renewed. And the closer we got to the date where we really needed to decide, the more I realized that we hadn't actually prayed about it. 
So I hadn't prayed about it. My husband and I hadn't prayed about it together. And I don't know whether or not my daughter had prayed about it, but I'm pretty sure she hadn't. And so I was kind of starting to feel unsettled because it was a big decision to make, right? To send your child on the missionary trip, you know, to spend that effort and that money on this experience. And I really felt that this should be something that we should actually pray about and to see like, does the Lord actually want her to go? Do we have peace about this? So I approached my husband and I said, hey, you know, I want to be open about this opportunity, but I'm really feeling unsettled. Um, I know we haven't prayed about it. I want to start praying about it. And he agreed. And so we prayed about it together. But then we brought our daughter into the conversation. So um, there was a few things happening throughout the year and we had to you know, figure out the finances and all these different things and really kind of decide what the rest of the year in the summer was going to look like. And so we had our own ideas as to maybe what that could look like, but we were open to our daughter and her thoughts and this entire process. And so we came to a point that after being on the same page as with together as a couple, we wanted to have this conversation with our daughter. And so we told her, we said, hey, this is what we're thinking about. Um, this is kind of where we are. We didn't know whether God was saying yes or no. And so we were just trying to tell her all the things that we were thinking. And in her brain, she heard a no. So she really started crying because she was feeling really sad about it. Because like I said, she was convinced that she was going to go. And obviously we were the horrible people telling her she couldn't go. Um, and we repeated to her, we said, no, if the Lord wants you to go, he will give all three of us peace and you'll go. If he doesn't want you to go, then we won't have peace about it. We'll see doors close and it'll be okay. You'll still have a really good summer. And so the three of us prayed about it together and she was still feeling really sad and we allowed her to be sad. We talked her through it because honestly, you know, when you're hoping for something and it doesn't happen, it's sad and that's normal. Now there is about maybe a three week window where we really needed to make a final decision. And so it wasn't going to be like this open thing that suddenly last minute, it would be a yes. And we'd be holding off that long. We said like, there is an end date to this. We do, you know, we're going to set this firm date. We want to know by this particular time, and we will have a decision. And so then we left. I didn't have any more conversations with my daughter about it. If she had come to me and asked more questions or wanted to talk about it more, I would have been open to that um, because we really do try to build a relationship with her and have those conversations and we don't shy away from anything. And so we just prayed about it. So I prayed about it independently. My husband prayed about it independently, whether or not my daughter did, I don't know. But as that final date came closer and closer, I was kind of landing on the no page. I really wasn't feeling like the Lord was leading her to Mexico this summer. And so I told my husband and I said, Hey, that this is kind of how I'm feeling. And he was feeling the same. And so we were both on the same page and we both really felt that that answer was coming from the Lord. And so now it was time to tell our daughter. And I don't want to over dramatize it, but I kind of felt like the rest was kind of a miracle because like I said, at the beginning of the story, like she was gung ho. If you know my daughter, you know that she is very passionate and she has very specific ideas and she loves to win and she loves being right and she will sometimes go to extreme measures to make sure that she gets what she wants when she wants it and so when we approached her with our final answer like no we don't feel the lord is wanting you to go i was expecting a huge fight or some sort of huge meltdown and when i told her where we were, she looked at me and she's like, yeah, okay. I kind of figured. <laughs> that was the last thing I was expecting. Like, honestly, I have no clue where that came from. 
And my only answer is that that must have come from the Lord. Now, later when we were talking about it, she was like, no, I just kind of knew that you and dad were going to say no. And so, you know, I was okay with it. And in my head, I was like, no, I know you. I know that you would have fought tooth and nail and that this attitude of peace is from the Lord. And since that day, she hasn't asked us a bazillion times. She hasn't tried to convince us that we made the wrong decision. Like from that moment, that was that. And so to me, this was a huge lesson in not only bringing God into a decision, which I was used to and my husband and I were used to, but this was really the first time that we had done this with one of our children. Because up to this point, you know, we kind of made the decisions for our children just between my husband and I. We haven't really brought our children in to a lot of our decision making um, because we just didn't feel they were the right age or maybe it just wasn't the right circumstance. But in this particular instance, it was bringing God into a decision that we wanted to make with our daughter. Because up until that point, we hadn't really. My hope is, and I've talked to my daughter about this since, is really teaching her the importance of making decisions with the Lord. That you can pray about something and then you wait. And in that waiting, you know, maybe you're having conversations with people you trust, maybe you're reading your Bible, maybe you're doing other things, but you're waiting to hear from the Lord to see what he has to say to you. You know, in that waiting time, she did come on her own to me and she said, mom, like, how will we know? How will we know what God is saying? You know, yes or no, or here or there. And so I gave her some examples from, you know, our past of times when we felt the Lord, when we specifically went to the Lord for a very specific direction, how we knew he was leading us one way or another, and that I had full trust that the Lord would give us peace about whichever direction again, because we had so many examples of the Lord doing this over and over and over and over again in our marriage. And I wanted to start that with our daughter and say, you know, we will turn to God and he will make the decision and we will obey it. You know, I'm sure this conversation isn't over with her. And I'm sure as the time draws closer, we're, where she's going to see a lot of her friends go to Mexico and she misses out on the opportunity, um, she might have some hard feelings and that's going to be okay. But ultimately my lesson in this process has been that I can let God be the parent. I can let the yes or no come from him and not from me. And so when I'm leading with God first, I don't want to say that like God becomes the bad guy, but just to say that, just to show that sometimes decisions, a lot of decisions are outside of us that it's not up to mom and dad, that it's really up to God and that he's the one directing her life. And we need to start training her in that. And to me, there was, this was a perfect opportunity to show her that this is how God leads in our lives. And we're going to take this opportunity and let the Lord lead and see where he tells us to go and then whichever direction it is he'll go and she even asked that she's like is this about money like is this gonna be really expensive and I was a missionary kid and so in the 80s where you didn't build up support so you didn't really know who was sending you what money during the month um, and the Lord provided the entire time my parents were on the mission field. And so I know that when the Lord calls you to do something and involves some sort of money, that if he wants you to go, he will provide. And I said, sweetie, I'm not concerned about the money. If God wants you to go, the money won't be a problem. 
And she was really confused by that. And I, I gave you a few, I gave her a few examples um, that we had from our own personal life. I said, hey, like in this instance, you know, we were concerned and God provided. And in this instance, God provided and so on and so forth. And I said, if the Lord wants you to go, he will provide. And money is not the decision maker because I wanted to enforce that it was God leading, that it wasn't about money. It wasn't about mom and dad. It wasn't about like the bazillion factors that it could have been, but it was really about depending on the Lord and saying like, Hey, where do you want me to be? Do you want me on that missions trip? Do you want me at home? Where do you want me to be? And so this was just a really great example for me as to how to start really teaching my daughter how to depend on the Lord for direction. Um, and thankfully, our first experience went really well. Who knows what will happen next time? But it was an encouragement and a reminder to me to say, let's continue to allow the Lord lead in decision making. And if that involves your child, like bring them into that prayer time, you know, talk them through your process, talk them through how you know God's speaking, talk them through all the things, you know, be ready for whichever answer, be knowing that had we felt peace that it was a yes, that she would be going. I was just that whole entire thing. I was just really encouraged and it was just a really good, solid example of the Lord's leading. Now, after that time, fast forward a couple weeks or a month or maybe two months, I forget the timing. She came to me and she's like, mom, I mean, I know I love the Lord and I know he exists, but like, I just, I don't feel him. I like, he doesn't speak to me. And um, in my head, I try not to laugh, but I was able to say like, hey, do you remember just a few months ago when this and this happened and we prayed and the Lord gave us direction and we made this decision? And she was like, right. And I said, like, that was the Lord speaking. That was the Lord speaking to you. And yeah, maybe it was through mom and dad, but it was still the Lord speaking. And it was a very specific instance in your life. And so now, not only was this prayer time an example of God's wisdom and direction, it's now an example of God's presence in her life. That now when she has doubt, I can show her as a parent, she can go back to that moment and say, oh yeah, remember when God spoke? Remember when God led? is an example of faith so that in this moment when she's struggling, it helps her renew her faith. It helps remind her who God is and his relationship that he has with her and that he knows all the things and that he's directing her life. When we're praying with our children, it can be all of these things. And when my kids were young, it felt extremely overwhelming because I would hear messages about praying as a family and in my brain, I was just like, it felt just like one more thing that I needed to do. And I had a really hard time with our kids when they were super young and I was regularly overwhelmed, mostly every day. I didn't have a lot of space for many things. And even the thought of praying together as a family after dinner felt impossible. And so we didn't. And so I want to give you permission and say, if you are in a season of life where you are already feeling overwhelmed, I don't want you to listen to this and feel guilty that it's one thing that you're not doing. The scripture tells us that there are seasons to life and there were seasons in our lives where there wasn't space for many things. Um, and that's okay because I did feel guilty in those years, but the Lord was able to heal 
those times, you know, like regardless whether or not we prayed together as a family, he didn't give up on us. He knew that we still loved him, that we wanted our children to learn all these things about prayer, but it, it just, I just didn't have capacity for it. And so I don't want you to feel like it's just one more thing you have to do. And I don't want you to feel guilty that you're not doing it because you don't have capacity right now. I get it. I've been there. Okay. So if that is your season right now, I give you a pass. Okay. I'm going to give you a few tips. So hopefully it's not completely overwhelming, just a place to start. But if even that is too much, it's okay. Maybe in a year, maybe two years, maybe five, who knows? There will be a time when you will have more capacity. And if that is when you start praying with your children, that's okay. Because regardless of when you start with them, it will still teach them something. It will still be beneficial. Okay, so two quick tips to help you get started praying with your family. And the first one is just to keep it simple. So I've been to many meals where the person who is praying just goes on and on and on and prays so long and my kids are sitting there starving and it's not the greatest experience, right? Or, you know, the family devotion time that I remember was when I was like 10, 11, 12, when we would all pray. And in my head, that was what I was supposed to do with my kids. And I knew that that wasn't realistic. And so I just didn't do anything. And so I just want to tell you that it can be super simple. You can just pray for your meal or after your meal, you can pray for one person or maybe one of you says, Hey, what are you thankful for today? Let's thank God for it. God, thank you for blah, blah, blah. The end. It doesn't have to be super complicated. You don't have to follow a script. You don't have to follow a plan. Um, you can just keep it really, 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 really simple because the simpler it can be for you, the more likely you're going to start. And then you have something that you can build on when you're like, okay, hey, this works. This is working. This is okay. We can maybe have two people pray. <laughs> Or maybe not, and that's okay too. So just to keep it simple, um, one of the examples I'm gonna give you is something that my sister did. A few summers ago, we went to visit her and her kids were still in school, even though our kids weren't. And so we walked to them to school and she got to a corner and she said, you know, every day when we get to this corner, I." pray for my kids and their school day and their teachers and it was like a one minute prayer and then she kept going and that was a really great example that you know this particular corner was a marker for her a reminder that she wanted to pray for her children and for her children's teachers and that every day when she got to that marker she just did a simple prayer hey you know, I pray for, she has five kids, so it took her a little bit longer than it would be, you know, I only have three kids. Um, and she would say, hey, I just pray for her five kids and for their teachers and that you give them patience, love, you know, amen. Really simple, off we go. And so it wasn't super complicated. She didn't have to memorize a whole bunch of stuff. She just had a marker and she stopped and she prayed. And so... I encourage you to pick one marker during your day to pray with your family. So that could be in a car, it could be at dinner, it could be on a walk, whatever it is that you do. If you do something at least once a day with your family, try to see how you can incorporate just a little bit of prayer in those moments. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does, awesome. Okay, so start simple. My second tip for you is to remind your children of answered prayer, to point them out. So one of the things that builds faith is not just when we pray, but then when we see answered prayers. 
and it could be really simple. So for example, I already told you that when my kids are afraid, I pray for peace. You know, I pray that they would feel the Lord with them. One of them was really, really afraid of a thunderstorm that was happening. And so I prayed with them and we prayed for peace and that they would feel the Lord's presence. Later on that night, they were still awake. They couldn't hear the thunderstorm. And so, yeah, no, it was my son. And he, and he said to me like, hey, God answered my prayer. It's not thundering anymore. And so when he was speaking to, to me and say, hey, like the Lord answered my prayer, I want to try to affirm those moments and say like, hey, yeah, the Lord did answer your prayer because for him, he was now separated from the storm. The storm was over and then he could, you know, like fall asleep in peace. So when, you know, we're praying for something, it's so good to then go back and say like, hey, do you remember when we prayed for this thing? This is how the Lord's answering it. Because as I shared with you in my story, when we do this, it builds their faith that God does exist. He does hear our prayers and he does answer them. Because if they have examples of God answering their prayers, they will continue to want to pray, right? It's like when you're having a conversation with somebody, if they're not giving you anything in that conversation, you kind of just want to end that conversation. You don't really want to keep doing it. You might think like, hey, this person isn't necessarily going to be the greatest friend because they can't hold a conversation with me. And so we don't want that feeling when we are trying to encourage our children to have a relationship with God. We want them to know that God answers prayers. So the more examples we can give them of God answering prayers, the more they will then be encouraged to continue to pray, right? To continue to have that conversation with God. I hope that you've been encouraged and I hope I've given you just a really quick way for you to get started. Um, in a couple weeks, I will be doing a training called the seven simple steps to create a habit of family prayer. So if you want to go deeper, you know, you want to get going and you just want a few more ideas or just a few simple, you know, tips for you to get started, then I will be going deeper into this in a couple weeks. So you can be on the watch for that. Also, on Monday, keep your eyes open. I am going to open the doors to the Christ-Centered Home Bundle that I have. Now, this is a collection of 29 free products to help Christian women establish a strong foundation in every aspect of their life and cultivate a home environment that honors God. So, there are so many amazing products in this bundle for you. All of them are free and they will be available to you starting Monday. So keep your eyes out. If this bundle sounds like something you're interested in, sign up for the wait list because even though this bundle is free, you will have an opportunity to upgrade and get even more products. The premium products in this upgrade are amazing. And I think you'll really enjoy all of these things. When you sign up to my wait list, you'll get a special discount code that you can apply to that upgrade. So if that's something you want and that's something you're interested in, please sign up for the wait list at www.wonderdermanlife.com forward slash bundle. You'll be part of the first people who know when the doors are open and then you'll get that coupon discount code that you can apply. You can access all of these products starting Monday. And also starting next week, I'm going to be doing some training sessions. And next week I'll be doing the first called strategies for teaching and modeling Christian values to your children. So over the next couple of weeks, I'll be sharing about the bundle, about all the different products, but also giving you just some really hands-on practical tips how you can really make this a reality to make Christ the center of your home and your life. And this can encompass a lot of things and I have some really amazing training ideas that I have ready for you. Um, but if there's a particular topic that you want me to handle that you have questions about, please leave it in the comments below 
and I will do my best to incorporate some sort of answer to that in my upcoming content and make that available for you. So I've got lots of special things lined up in the next couple of weeks. I'm really excited about it. Make sure to stay tuned to this podcast, um, my Facebook group, my YouTube channel. I'll make sure to leave all the links so you don't miss any of it. I really just thank you so much for joining me. And if you know somebody who could really appreciate this episode, please share it with them. That would just mean so much to me so we can just keep growing this channel and help more and more women have a Christ-centered life. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you next week. Bye.